This week on Incessantly Seeking, The Pursuit of Creativity. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here today with uh, my favorite couple, Mike Hasselin and Nick Wilson. Um, welcome, thank you so much for being here today. I'm super excited to be having this conversation with them. Um, I've known Mike for a while and through Mike I came to know Nick um, and here we are today. So uh, we've been discussing incessantly seeking the things that drive our lives, our pursuits, our passions, our love. Um, so I want to just put the question out there on the floor for the two of you. Um, I'd love to, for all, uh, us all, hear a little bit about your story. So why don't we start with Mike and then Nick and then how you met and uh, how we're still here today. All right. Uh, how we met. Um, well... <laughs> Nick, jump in if I if I miss anything. But Nick and I met shooting a pilot in New York uh, years ago, and um, when the when I was cast in that, my friend who Luciana you know as well, Noah Mash created it. Um, I, I knew most of the cast in it, uh, but Nick was the one face like I hadn't seen um, before, and I was like, how did I miss this cutie on Instagram? You know, or like how have I not seen his face before? Um, so going into it, I, I was like, hmm, can't wait to meet this guy. Um, and then we did, we met shooting in person, at, uh, on Long Island. And, um, there was a day we both had like some, some very shirtless scenes and, you know, we bonded over like, you know, they, they had pizza that day at lunch and we were like, Oh God. Um, so we bonded over that and just kind of hit it off right away. And, um, the, the, the cool thing is actually we, we, um, were friends for like a year first and, um, then, you know, things progressed and Nick was like, I want to like hang out. Like, I think there's something here. Um, and I agreed. And uh, yeah, so we hung out for a, a long weekend and the rest is history. We've pretty much been together ever since. Nick, is that exactly how it happened? Um, yeah, I mean, Mike, you did a really good story. Or, or you did a really good job at, uh, you know, documenting the entire story or journey. But yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it was crazy. I mean, I was just really excited to film this pilot in New York and meet all these cool people. But, um, you know, to be able to meet your future husband on set on top of that is just like a bonus I didn't even expect. That wasn't even in like, you know, that wasn't something I expected. But to be able to leave with that on top of just like an awesome experience was, I mean, more than I could ever ask for. But, um, but yeah, we did bond over not wanting to eat pizza like an hour before a bunch of shirtless scenes so we uh we, we shared a couple of turkey burgers together and um the rest is history we really just hit it off after that i feel like that sounds like so douchey and superficial it's like we didn't want to eat pizza <laughs> but the, the the point of the story it was like it was our cute little um that was kind of how we started talking you know because we actually didn't have too many scenes together uh so that was kind of like the reason we like said our first words to each other. And then, it, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> and you've been together for how many years now? Oh, Two, three, three years. Yeah. 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 Three years. Like this, ne ne this month, next month, three and a half yeah. years coming up, coming oh, up in three years. <laughs> and we've known each other for four, maybe just over four. four. Yeah. That is so sweet. Now I always, uh, tell people the story when I met the two of you together for the first time because <laughs> Mike was living in New York and I was in LA. Um, and so when we did the influencers in, in Canada, it was the first time we all got to hang out together. And I remember at dinner time, the two of you offering each other food. It was like the most adorable thing I've ever seen. It was Mike like, honey, do you need something? Let me cook for you. And then Nick was like, no, no, I'll cook for you. No, you sit. No, you sit. And this was maybe two years already into their relationship. And I remember looking at it and saying, yeah, I want that. That, that sounds exactly what I'm looking for. So you two have been actors before you've met and you're still actors. Um, and so let's talk about that. I would love to hear a little bit more about when you wake up in the morning, now you have each other, right? And you are going towards something. What is that? What is the pursuit that drives you every day? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, I think 
Mike and I are very, I mean, part of the reason why we click other than I guess food is a recurring theme in our connection <laughs> and love story here. But part of the reason why I think we get along so well is because we are just obsessively creative and just driven to create content, period. Because I know, you know, when Michael was little, he would be putting on like plays and productions and convince the neighborhood kids to like, you know, be in his little plays. His dad built a trap door in his back in his backyard for like, you know, a stage and stuff. And here I was in Canada, like obviously, you know, years and years before we even met doing a similar thing, putting on like talent shows for my family, starring me and only me or whatever. And, um, you know, I think as we've grown up, it just kind of evolved into, I guess, a more polished version of that. So whether it's creating, you know, YouTube content or TikToks or more, you know, legitimate scripted kind of content, we're just constantly working on several projects at once and just, I don't know, trying to fulfill that sort of creative drive that seems to kind of have been instilled at us since we were little kids. So, so yeah, I mean, that's uh, kind of what keeps us going or keeps me going every day. Yeah, totally. I, I, you know, I had this epiphany like a couple of years ago because um, uh, I've been acting since I was five, you know, and I went to school for acting like to college, to conservatory. And um, I just really realized over the past few years, because then I started to dip into writing and directing and, you know, we all worked on the influencers together and many other projects that I really had this epiphany a few years ago that like I just it sounds like um like I, I kind of love slash hate the word creator because I feel like everyone's a creator these days. But I real I did realize I was like, oh, I just like creating things. I just like making shit, you know, like even like Nick said, when I was little, I would like, you know, try and do a, a stage version of Jurassic Park and make all my brothers and the neighborhood kids be in it. And I was just always making stuff or making a puppet show or whatever, you know, Um but and I've actually found like a ton of freedom in that too. You know, it's like it's not this little box of like must be successful actor because I am uh, luckily just as equally fulfilled doing so many other things. I just want to be part of it. I want to make stuff. I want to help my friends make stuff. And um, like Nick said, I think that's why that one of the many reasons we really do well together. Because um, I after. My my uh, the person I dated before Nick I was like I'll never date an actor again. But it works for us because we have a similar drive and spirit, and it's just um, honestly, it's like a I, I would it's like a childlike um, creativity. It's just like we just are silly and like to make shit and try things. And if it's not you know TV, then Nick's making music, and I'm helping with that. Or you know we always we can't help ourselves. We're pretty insatiable, but I think in a good way. Knock on wood. <laughs> It depends on the week. <laughs> and I love that you brought up the word creator because as we all start to write, direct, produce, and you know, create content of different forms, I I am confronted with that a lot. I'm not sure if you guys got that question. Like, but what do you really want to do? Do you get yeah. that? Yeah. Totally. I, I feel like it is slowly shifting though. And it, Lucy and I'm interested in if you think the same thing, but I feel like way back when you could only be one thing, you know, it's like if singers wanted to transition into TV film, they could enter, you know, they weren't uh, respected as much and vice versa. And now I do think we kind of live in the age of the multi hyphenate where like people, um, everyone has, you know, is wearing so many hats. Uh, but, but I, I totally know what you mean. I do get that sometimes where Sometimes it's like they want you to pick a lane and be like, okay, but what do you really do? Or what do you want to do? And it's like, no, I like doing all of these things equally. Um, but I also think maybe it's just people not being able to really f mentally grasp it themselves, you know, and they want you to be able to define and, you know, lay it out. And you're like, and creator can, so that's why I made a joke earlier about it. It can just sound like so vague, you know, like a lot of like, TikTok influencers are like, I'm an online creator. It's like, okay. <laughs> you know, and, and they are fine. But you know what I mean? I think it, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. I, I think people just kind of want you to like pick a lane so that it makes more sense to them sometimes, yeah. maybe. 
Yeah, and I've I've had occasions where I've applied for gigs or put myself out there for not only my projects but other other people's projects and be like, I'd love to direct this. You know, you're looking for a female director of color. Here I am, and you know, I've been met with. But we are also an actor, but you also produce. Like, but you know, this is an opportunity for someone who really wants to direct. And I I'm there like well. I, I'm applying. <laughs> what makes you think I don't want to do it? I obviously um, want to direct. Yeah, yeah I obviously yeah. want to do it. That's why I'm here. Um, but, you know, I, I agree with you, Mike. I think it's slowly changing and I hope that it continues. So here we are in this pursuit for creativity and that being the force that drives our lives and the thing that we strive to do every day and hopefully sustain ourselves doing so. And then COVID happened. Um, and with the two of you, not only COVID happened, but Nick, you're pretty brave to come out and share your cancer story uh, publicly. I found out when I texted Mike and I said, hey, I thought you guys were coming to visit LA. And, you know, I was going through a breakdown of a relationship and I was really sad and I was really hoping for some family time. And Mike said to me, no, you know, because we just found out that Nick uh, it has cancer and we can't leave. And I remember being that like the tipping point for me. And I just cried for like two weeks straight because I was like, I thought love was supposed to keep you safe, you know? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. To me, I feel like one of the biggest, you know, drives of my life has been love, has been finding love, like finding um, uh, like a partner. And once you two found each other, my mind was like, no, now you're safe. Love is supposed to protect you from everything. And, you know, obviously life happens and, so to me, it was kind of like, we spend so much time trying to find the right person. And when you found it, you know, you found it. And now, like, shit happens. And you're just like, so I was going through my own journey oh, no. um, of love and loss and all that was happening. But I'm so happy to uh, be on this other side with you guys of success and overcoming. And, you know, and I want to hear that. Did that interfere with your pursuits? Did you find a time when you realized, wait a minute, is this really what life is about? What matters to me? And, and how do I go about it going forward? Oh, gosh, yes. Um, you know, I think for starters, like COVID in general, and just the pandemic itself, forced everyone in the world to kind of like slow down, take a step back and reevaluate everything that they were currently doing. Even people who weren't working in the entertainment industry were like, wait, do I really like working in finance? Like, mm -hmm. I'm kind of, you know, they, people use it as an opportunity to kind of like, maybe start a new chapter or reevaluate what they had going on. And so we were already kind of experiencing a bit of that. And then I just remember there was a break with auditions because, you know, no sets were like allowed to be filming anything. And so, you know, there was kind of that like hunger for like, I can't wait to get a self tape. I can't wait to get a self tape. And finally, when things opened up again, I found myself being super busy and, you know, fortunately enough, um, booked some really exciting or a really exciting project, but literally days before found out that I was going to have to go through like weeks and weeks of chemo. And that I just remember being like, oh my God, like, you know, you work so many years to kind of build momentum, build a relationship with casting and hopefully get an opportunity that like makes it feel like you kind of are breaking through and getting your foot in the door and to have that kind of get have to turn that down after like finally feeling like you got there was like are heartbreaking on top of you know the health stuff that was already going on and so that was really difficult to kind of cope with and just kind of having to take a step back from the acting and stuff like you know i think as actors sometimes as grateful as you are to get an audition in a self tape like there are times where you're like oh, do i really have to learn 13 pages for tomorrow like you almost you sometimes take it for granted or, you know, there are moments where you forget how much you love it when you're in it. And it wasn't until I was forced to literally take a step back and, you know, just sit out for months at a time where I like really just sat down and was like, man, like I really genuinely love this shit. Like I miss just look like sitting down with some sides and just like breaking down the script and just like the process of, you know, reading about a new project and just feeling like I'm doing the thing as an actor. Um, so that was extremely challenging. But during that time, it confirmed that this is what I want to do. I want to be creating. And it also forced me to focus on different types of, you know, creativity that I hadn't really explored before. I know you guys were talking about being a multi-hyphenate 
and, you know, kind of a self-starter as an actor. And I never, I don't consider myself a screenwriter at all, but I was like, screw it. I'll write a pilot. I have this idea that I think could be fun. I am not a writer by any means, but like, why not? You know what I mean? So I really enjoyed that process. And, you know, it just, it kind of forced me to explore a lot of different elements of production and entertainment in general. And I think it gave me a better understanding and things that I can, you know, maybe take away from those things and help me as an actor moving forward. Um, you know, now that I'm in a position to comfortably audition again and thankfully healthy enough to commit to a project and not have to worry about needing to pull out or something. So, um, yeah, that was super long winded, but (laughs) that's, that's pretty much, um, you know, how I felt about the whole situation and, and where I'm at now. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It, it, it solid. If anything, it just solidified how I feel about uh, my pursuits and like my passion. Last year was like obviously the hardest year of our lives. I mean, I think it was for everyone with the pandemic. But then the cancer curveball was so crazy. It, it was just like it made the pandemic feel like nothing, you know, because we had been like in quarantine, like locked up for months and going through. I think pandemic blues like everyone else, and then got that curveball, which was like very hard. Um, but through it all, I think it just kind of reaffirmed this, like, oh yeah, this is what I love. And Nick can attest, like, I'm such a, I really am such a sicko for it. You know, like even when we we were in Toronto, which Toronto was locked down literally until last week for a whole year. So it's 15 degrees out. There's nothing to do except you take Nick to the hospital and home. And even then I, we were like binging, like, Turner classic movies and kind of like researching and watching like classics or things I'd never seen before, or, or we'd like, you know, have a creative day and just write all day. Um, so, you know, and, and also I think cancer really taught us like a lot of those cliches that people joke about. We really now have a different perspective on life and realize how true that they are. Like life truly is so short. Like, and like you said, it's like, I'm so fortunate. I kind of found my like, partner and it, it's it's a done deal and we are so great together um and like you just don't know what tomorrow has or what curveball is gonna come your way so it kind of just made me really be like once we get through this and i know we will like we got to go for it even harder you know because i'm like you have one life to live and uh you know i'm gonna chase it harder than ever before because now i feel like i have a better sense of how precious life is you know yeah. I love that. I love that you guys, um, I think as artists, it gives us this perspective and uh, ability to really look deeper into uh, the curveballs that life throws us. But for right here with the two of you is that your creativity really was a comfort through this time. You know, once you had this time to realize that, oh, wow, I really did want to do this all my life and I am doing it in whatever capacity. And I love that, Nick, that you are like, oh, I'm just going to write because why not? And I think that, at least for me as well, during the pandemic, we found new ways to explore the things that we wanted to be doing and in some ways opened up new doors that maybe we wouldn't have walked through if this hadn't happened. Um, So now going forward for the two of you, right, we had this huge, we had the before, we had the the big disruptor for, for the two of you more than in one way. And now we're past it, right? We're just about to move forward. And I hear this constant uh, request of back to the new normal or back to normal. I keep saying back to the new normal because I hope it's new. I want to hear for you guys, like, how do you looking forward? How do you envision what you experience, not only projected in your creativity, but also in your life? Uh, for starters, I will never be nervous for an audition or self tape ever again. <laughs> just, just, just compared to what we've been through and the situations that we found ourselves in over the past nine months, like I, if we can get through that, like I, you know, I could care less. I'm just gonna go in and do the work and put my best foot forward. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it was just a reminder that life is short. So if you have an idea for a short film, a script a TikTok video, whatever it might be, put it down, put it out there and just, and get it done. Just create whatever you want to create. Don't second guess yourself. Stop worrying about that. This is that little voice inside of your head, the imposter syndrome or the, your inner saboteur, like just, you know, ignore that and just trust your gut and just go for it. And 
you know, I'm just so excited to get back to creating ideas and hopefully, you know, working a ton. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to I keep reading all these articles that say like, you know, once we go back to normal, whatever that means or looks like now that it's going to be like the roaring 20s again, which it's, you know, always interesting with history, how it's uh, just a giant cycle. But I'm ready for it. I'm excited for it. I also think it's exciting. You know, trying to look at the positive of the past year, Luciana, I'm sure you feel the same way about the what it's done to the industry. Obviously, like it put everything on hold. But now I think the model is going to change because of it. You know, we are we still see it, even though all the movie theaters are open now. It's like, well, like films are going to go to theaters and be released on like Disney Plus for an extra thirty dollars. You know what I mean? So it's interesting. I'm I'm just excited uh, to see what happens, and also I I along the lines of how they're saying it's going to be the roaring twenties. I think everyone has like this newfound zest for life and we know what it's like to be on hold and to not have outlets or options or things to do. So um, I'm excited to see how people embrace that. I'm excited to see like kind of how the entertainment and filmmaking industry um, kind of embraces that. And I think I already felt like we, we are living in a golden age of TV, but I feel like it's just going to get even better, knock on wood. So I'm really excited for it. And then in terms of us personally, yeah, it kind of like what I was saying, it's like, we don't take a day for granted anymore, even like tough days. Um, and I, I've been told by other friends who've gone through like cancer or like awful illnesses that that stays with you the rest of your life. So I'm excited to see how it helps kind of inform and shape our perspectives, you know, years down the line. I do have to say that I personally am terrified of the term roaring 20s because <laughs> the last thing I remember of 2020, early uh, or 2019, early 2020 was that all over social media, the roaring 20s, and everybody was dressing in 1920s clothing. And I remember thinking, whoa, I love it, so classy. Let's, you know, it's, this is gonna be our year. And two, two months later, everybody's like, what? Yeah, I was just gonna say, wasn't that so the sentiment? Like everyone, cause it's a new decade, that's exciting, right? And it's not like the teens, it's like the 20s. And everyone was like, 2020 is gonna be my year. Like, you know, gonna make 2020 my bitch. And then like, <laughs> no whoops. Yep. I can safely <laughs> say, I think 2020 made everybody their bitch. <laughs> yeah, 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 amen. <laughs> but no matter how well we thought we came out of it or how we tried, but I thought it was, you know, overall really tough, uh, if not emotionally or physically or you know, financially. Mentally, yeah. Uh, mentally in so many ways. Um, but as we start to wrap up, and I've been loving this discussion about uh, the pursuit of creativity, I would love for you guys to add any last remarks, anything you want to share. I love what you said, Nick, about pursuing what you love. Uh, you mentioned movies that you've watched that helped you research and, and be motivated and, and excited. Any anything that you, any titles you'd like to share? Um, I mean, my new motto is life's too short to be anything other than your authentic self. Um, and I feel like that should and, and does apply to everyone out there um but in terms of things that we've watched recently that inspired me um hacks on hbo max we i think we watched it in two days maybe 48 hours it was so, good. so well written and then also very introspective because it's about the industry as well and um, you know how ridiculous certain <laughs> elements of you know of all of it is but uh but yeah hacks was really really great yeah, that was super good. I, um, I, well, so what, during when we were locked down in Toronto, I, I basically started watching all the classics like I had never seen. Like, I'm ashamed to say it. I, at, at the time, I hadn't seen like, um, uh, Citizen Kane or like Gone with the Wind. So I, I just made my way through like all of those Sunset Boulevard. And I love classic Hollywood. So, like, the, the, that, that time period or those movies just like really like did it for me. But along those lines, like, I think my biggest, thing that I've realized that works for me the past few years and the biggest advice I kind of give to like fellow creatives or artists is like you just got to do whatever it takes to keep yourself inspired you know what I mean and like it's different every day some days maybe it's like journaling and going for a long walk and listening to like a podcast that's gonna get you thinking or inspired for me it's watching like old-fashioned movies and watching the I don't know the Hollywood Reporter roundtables so whatever it is, and it can be as simple as like drawing or a walk or like whatever to, you know, 
writing or something more involved. I think you just got to do whatever keeps you in that place, you know, of feeling like inspired and motivated and like that brings that like kind of childlike curiosity out. Um, and it's easier to do, you know, some days than others, but, uh, I think that's kind of the goal, you know, and if you can kind of live in that space, I think, uh, you know, you tend to be more productive and happier, you know? I love that. And before we go, can you both share where people can connect with you? I love, I personally love your TikTok videos. I find them hilarious. <laughs> So I recommend them to everybody. Um, yeah, if you can just uh, share your handles and share sure, sure. connect with you there. Well, the TikTok thing is funny because I was such a hater of TikTok. And then the pandemic happened and it was like, let's just try it. And we've actually had like quite a bit of fun with it. It's so um, much fun. I also, I always, I advocate for TikTok too, actually now I've come full circle because I'm like, it's kind of like teaching you how to be like your own little like filmmaker. It's like very pared down like um, levels of, you know, like final cut and like editing and like, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. It's accessible for everyone. Um, but you can find me on all the social things at Mike Heslin and we're on TikTok um, as at Mike and Scotty. Um, yeah. You can find me on all my socials at Scotty Dynamo. I you DJ under that name and I should probably figure out how to <laughs> pivot and navigate that moving forward as an actor. But, um, you know, we'll deal with that in 2021. And here we are. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you guys joining me today at Incessantly Seeking, talking about the pursuit of creativity. And um, I look forward to see what else you guys create and put out in the world. And I'm personally so grateful and, you know, love spending the creative time together and just having fun. Um, and uh, if you haven't yet, do check the influencers on Amazon streaming. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we thanks so much for having much us. We love you. This was so fun. Yes, I love you guys. I hope I see you both soon. <laughs> for sure. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Incessantly Seeking, a new episode every Friday. <laughs>